So the purpose of our call uh, or our call today obviously is to look at ways of one, generating clients in this time of um, uh, craziness from a business point of view. Uh, number two is to uh, also make sure that we keep the clients that we have right now, keeping, keep, keeping them on and paying uh, is really critical. Um, uh, and more importantly, three, to share uh, different ideas and to be able to answer your questions about uh, what you need you need to be able to help you on doing things like scripting, messaging, we can talk about sales conversions, we can talk about all of those things. But today I'm going to share one tactic, um, going to give you some insights, uh, going to explain how this tactic literally, uh, we like in, in one of the, our previous agency business, this one tactic alone generated about $7 million of the business in one year. This tactic that I'm going to share with you today generated over $7 million of revenue in one year for our business. So, um, uh, and we still, in, even in our agency with Breakthrough, we have generated tens of millions of dollars utilizing this type of strategy into the marketplace. Um, uh, so I'm just going to, so whoever's writing that, uh, James, so let me just copy and paste this in the chat for you, James, just so we all have it. So it's right there, consultingunleashed.com forward slash go. You can see it in the chat, that's it. Just click on link. All right, so, <clears throat> so what I'm about to share with you is a tactic that works really well, but, I, but the approach that I'm going to share with you is to take it to a completely different slant because what will happen is you will actually have physical conversations, which is what you want in this business, with between five and 20 people. So who could use five to 20 people to talk to you right now about how you help them with your product or service? Just type one in the keyboard, right? Just type one. If you could do with five to 20 people that you like to have, that would like to have a chat with you in a very easy format, <clears throat> Hell yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Everybody's like, yeah, I want that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So <clears throat> there are a couple of things to take into consideration with this strategy and this idea. Um, uh, I'm just going to, I just need to uh, go to my screen because I've prepared some slides for all of you um, uh, in this iteration. Uh, and what I'm going to do is um, we are, so, I'm just going to open my slide deck to you and share my screen in just a moment um, uh, for you so that you can see how to get a whole bunch of clients or, sorry, leads for free, right? And these leads are people that are interested in what you have to offer, right? It's completely free, yeah? So... Um, with that, let's just get to the screen here and share it. And my screen sharing is not working. How's that? How cool is that? So I'm going to do this. All right. All right. You should all be seeing my screen right now. Okay. So let's just make sure you can see my screen. Just type in the chat, if you can just type two, if you can see, your, see my screen right now. If you can see me and my screen, uh, that'd be awesome. Just type two, we'll go, all right, cool. We're, we're, we're ready to rock and roll, okay? So um, let me give you the backstory of how I used to do this um, uh, very differently, and now we're gonna do this online, okay? So um, we had an agency, one of, our, one of the niches that we focused in on was, was in the financial markets. So we, had, we served accounting firms and we served um, uh, banking groups and we, 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 we served divisional products within banks. So we help banks with insurance products, marketing, and we help banks uh, and um, uh, uh, mortgage lenders in the mortgage market. Now, the people we spoke to were not the everyday mortgage lender, broker, who's out there as an independent broker in the market. That was not who our clients were. Our clients were much larger companies that have either hundreds or thousands of employees, lots of brokers in the market. And our accounting firms we used to work with were a minimum of five partners in an accounting firm up to uh, up to 50 partners. Between five and 50 partners was where we worked with, uh, with accounting firms. So the way we used to do this in the old days is we used to organize a particular breakfast. We would go, we would have a hotel, 
very fancy, like a fancy hotel. Uh, breakfast per head used to cost us about $65 to $70 per head for breakfast. So it was a very swanky breakfast. Uh, the, the, uh, the location was very high end. The service was uh, exceptional. Um, so we wanted to position, we wanted to make people feel like that was special. So we would invite people. We used to do one of two things. We did it where we tried it, where we'd offer people to come to breakfast for free. Uh, so we would actually personally invite invite people. Uh, we would create these amazing, very elaborate invitations that we would send out to people, direct mail, um, and invite them to this breakfast uh, to enjoy breakfast amongst their peers. The only people that could attend were decision makers, so managing partners of accounting firms, CEOs of, of banks and uh, of, of uh, director divisions of mortgage lending and all that sort of stuff. They were the only people that were allowed to come to the actual breakfast. So you were at a breakfast of your peers, right? People, you know, competitors and people at your level, right? So you came to this breakfast. The purpose of breakfast was to look at innovating and collaborating on new ideas to reach the market, uh, to improve the way that we message, communicate and branded our businesses. That was the purpose of the breakfast. Um, and also to get feedback on, on uh, opinions of what they felt was important and to air challenges, frustrations, things that, 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 uh, that perhaps that they wanted to, to voice uh, and, and have that conversation with. Now, as the facilitator of the breakfast, uh, I used to facilitate them. My business partners facilitated them. We had our uh, marketing directors facilitate these breakfasts. So we were running multiple uh, breakfasts at any one time. So we used to do this once every other week. Our goal was to get 10 people to breakfast. Uh, let me tell you, this breakfast became so popular that people were on waiting lists to actually come. And some people would fly into state just to come to this breakfast. They would fly the night before to attend the breakfast and then fly it the next day to go back to their offices. So this breakfast was a very special breakfast because we had peers, we had uh, very uh, interesting people in the room um, uh, in, in, at the table, and this was an opportunity for them to hang out with people. It's amazing how many people in the market, and we do this, by the way, even with Breakthrough, we're doing this with physical therapists right now, peer to peer, where, they're, where we're hanging out, talking about ideas, how to innovate, how to collaborate, and how to make sure that we're still staying in business. Right, so we're doing this right now, but in a virtual way, right? And we're doing it with our clients, but we're also what I'm saying is you can do this with prospects. I'm going to show you how to do this with prospects. So, on a physical level, so the conversation was we shared because we facilitated, we got we owned the group, right? We were in charge, we could do whatever we like. So, we controlled the agenda and we controlled what was shared uh, on the day. So we would share our latest and greatest idea that was working right now in their markets. We're just saying, hey, these are things that we're aware of. These are things we know. These are systems, procedures, operational structures that we know that can have a significant impact on revenue. And here's some of the new things that we're trying out there. And so that's us, right? Now, let's talk about you, right? Let's air a question uh, around the group. So the conversation was awesome. The breakfast used to last for about an hour and a half. Um, and, uh, and from there, we would never offer for them to talk to us. We would always follow up. We'd say, hey, um, uh, we've made some notes. Uh, we, we'd like to share those notes with you. But what we want to do is we'll make sure we want to touch base with you. Uh, because out of this, we want you to actually apply some of the things that perhaps you've picked up from this. And we'd love to get some feedback on your actions from the breakfast. So this gave us permission to speak to every person that attended. Now, on average for us, that meant six to eight clients every breakfast, six to eight new clients. Our average sale for marketing services, our cheap poverty pack was $60,000. Our average sale was about 120000 per client. So now you do the math. Imagine doing that six times, right? Uh, six to eight times every other week, right? So we were bringing on 12 to 16 clients a month just using this one strategy. And it was a very soft approach. Uh, there was positioning. There was a, there's a whole lot that goes into this that I need to explain to you, so just to give you give you perspective. But the idea was to make this very special, this very unique, very, make it very unique. So they had an experience. Uh, they had a very positive experience with us because we had our branding. Uh, we presented ourselves professionally. We were very on point. And guess what happened? What happened out of each of these conversations is we were getting an insight to where the market was. And so as we were building our insights, we were now communicating that message, reflecting that message back to the market. So, they, so the breakfast became more relevant. The meetings became more relevant to the people who would come. And so they love, people loved this. People absolutely loved this. We did, we did this for a few years. It was phenomenal right? Um, uh, it made us a lot of money in the marketplace. So 
I'm not suggesting, because right now we can't go and have breakfast with prospective customers. We can't go and do this in a physical location. Uh, we cannot make it a, uh, a, a, in a hotel environment. But to give you perspective, we've had seven of our consulting champions do this virtually. Um, and one of our consulting champions is about to, in about 20 minutes, got a pitch, got a big pitch with a client out of doing this very thing that I'm going to share. They did this the other day. Today, that in about 20 minutes from now, they're actually delivering a big pitch. But here's the thing. They got four appointments and they're also going to be able to speak. I think they had 11 people on the actual call. They're actually speaking to 11 people on the call, right, on the actual uh, meeting. So I'm going to walk you through how this works, I'm gonna answer your questions, right? Um, and I'm gonna share with you, um, uh, uh, share with you along the way. So let's get into it. So this is Martin Obiozor. Uh, he's a consulting champion. He runs a company called Empowered Pulse. He also works for Exxon Mobil. Uh, he is running a, uh, a multi six figure business whilst he's in a job. He's trying to leave his job. Uh, he wants to grow and he wants to thrive and uh, he's, he's uh, removing himself from corporate life, but he manages uh, quite a few clients. I think at the most he's been managing, he got 13 clients in less than two months, right? So he is doing this strategy. Now you'll notice that this, is, this photograph, this is actually a screenshot. You notice this photograph, his brand is behind him. This is a Zoom um, uh, 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 thing that you can do on Zoom with the video, you can change your change your background. And all he's done is he's created a slide with his logo on it, right? And it now is the background. And you'll notice that there's a few white caps in there. That's him. It's like being in front of a green screen. So he has his branding behind him. You'll notice he's wearing a shirt with his branding as well. Very professional. Um, but this is how he appeared to those people when he was doing a peer-to-peer -peer conversation um, uh, in, uh, in terms of offering or introducing or getting people to do this. So we've had a, a number of our champions do this and they've picked up business from doing this, right? So this is, this is something that works really, really well. But the kicker in this is the fact that you actually get to speak to everyone. You actually get to have a conversation, which is the very thing that we all want to do to everyone that participates this. So I'm going to walk you through the idea, right? So um, here's the idea. This is not a webinar right? This is not a webinar. This is not for you to say, here's how you do Facebook ads, or here's how, this is not what this is about. Remember, this is a peer-to-peer -peer discussion with business owners, right? Uh, a positive discussion about what's going on in the current business climate, how they're perhaps responding to the current business climate, um, and sharing and, and collaborating. So you're facilitating a conversation. That's what you're doing. I'm going to walk you through the introduction and how you do this. So all your questions are going to be answered, right? So it's a pretty, pretty simple process. Uh, I can do it. Let me just move myself out, out of the way there. So right now, peer-to-peer -peer discussion on the positive actions that, uh, to take in the current climate of business uncertainty, right? The purpose is to get people together to share and discuss options on what they can do to stay in business, to be in business and thrive in the mini boom that is about to come, uh, to get appointments or opportunities to invite people to engage your services, right, in a non-salesy uh, way, right? Uh, you are the leader and as the facilitator, this gives you authority and credibility as well. So to facilitate this discussion, this makes you, because you're the one putting this together, this makes you the authority. This makes you the person who is uh, um, uh, in charge here, right? This is a huge way to build your authority, right? Now, that's the idea. So what you need, an email list or LinkedIn connections. You need to be able to invite people to this uh, event. Business owners, if you want to do this generically to businesses, you offer services to the generic market, not to a niche, you can do that to the generic market, not to a niche. If you want to offer this to a niche, then you want to invite CEO level, right, people, decision maker people to this meeting, to this conversation. Remember right now we're stuff isolating, we're at home. Let me tell you, a lot of people will be interested in having this conversation because one, it's a very different approach. And two, it kind of makes sense. It's a good time to do this sort of stuff, right? So we now need to need, do an invitation. We need to position the invitation. In fact, I've done you all the favor. I've actually scripted an invitation for all of you here. You can actually take it and apply it. So you don't even have to think about this, right? This is as easy as it gets, right? Now you need Zoom meeting. So you need to have, you need to be, you need to have a Zoom meeting link. Now, um, if you want to go for more than an hour, you're gonna to have to have a paid meeting link at 40 minutes, it'll drop everybody out. So I would highly encourage you to spend 
I don't know what it is per month, 19 bucks or whatever for Zoom, Zoom meeting. Um, uh, pay the $19 so you can have as long a period as possible and it allows you to record the session uh, for, uh, for uh, your ability to give to people as well. Uh, Google Form for pre-event questions. You want to actually see some questions before the event. You want to share the answers with the people before the event so that when you come to the event, you actually have things that you can talk about or things that are relevant to the group, things that are relevant to the group. Uh, Michael Ayola says, thanks. John, for scripting the invite, your scripts are genius. Thank you, Nyla. I really appreciate that. Michael, I really appreciate you saying that. I work really hard to do lots of great scripting. So, <clears throat> here we go. So, what, this is what you need, right? Uh, in, in terms of what you need, right? So, the benefits to the, attendee, to the attendees. This is the reason why they will come. This is the benefit they get. So, they get positive and productive conversation with peers about the future of business. Fresh approach to and new ideas. The ability to ask questions on how they can do better online or how they can do better in business. Uh, to look at new opportunities. To have actionable things that they can apply to their business. Things that they can take away and apply and, ha and create impact with. Uh, also, the ability to review a recording of the session as well. Right, so you can do like you can give people eight minutes and say, "Great, well, it's a big question. Let's chime in and help you with the question. What's what's the challenge? You can treat it like a mini mastermind if you want to, right? So for them, lots of benefits. These are the things that you want to be incorporating in your invitation, or at least being acknowledging when you're talking to people about inviting them to this thing, right? Um, uh, so that's important. So benefits you build the media authorities and leader of facilitated group. So because you're the one leading the group, right? What do people need right now? They need leadership, they need certainty, they need assurance, they need to look to people who can take control and take charge. That's you, right? So that's what this position you at. Number two, you open yourself up to getting appointment opportunities. I'll explain how that will happen because ultimately you're gonna end up speaking to every single person. This is like a 100% conversion rate to an appointment, right? In the strategy, right? So you're going to create relevant and unique content and marketing pieces because you're recording this and you're having conversations, you're sharing your ideas and people are talking about the latest ideas or latest innovations in their businesses. You're recording this. You can actually uh, edit, cut, paste, use this as marketing pieces for your business. This is a great thing to create great content that you can use that are punchy to the marketplace, right? Um, <clears throat> you'll uh, also get great intelligence on where your market is, where, where it's at. So, super, so if you're talking to the, talking to the uh, you know, it's coming from the horse's mouth, right? You're not, uh, you're not Googling the ideas. You're actually getting real-time feedback on what's going on, which means you can improve your messaging, your communication to the marketplace so that more people respond to what you are saying and what you're offering out there, right? So you get great intelligence on where your market, where your market's at, right? Uh, you can now create relevant offers to suit the need uh, and the wants, right? And you can create relevant offers right now that'll get opened, that will get more response rate and more engagement. So this to you is huge. It is huge on so many different levels, right? Uh, because all you're doing is having a meeting and you're facilitating a meeting, right? Really, really simple, right? So the invitation, I have scripted it out for you. I'll even read it out to you so you can get the cadence. Now, you can change this and edit this to suit yourself and change, but this is just me doing a little bit of wording. Um, uh, this took me only two minutes to put together, so it's not perfect, but it's something that you can easily work with and you can copy, paste, edit. So I would all encourage you right now to take a screenshot of this email. Take a screenshot of this, so you should be able to do that. Just uh, type one once you've got the screenshot. Okay, just type one if you've got the screenshot of this email. One, 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 very cool. Okay, so all got a screenshot, right? I can't get any better than this to give you exactly what I would send out to the marketplace, right? It's pretty, I don't know if this is cool to you guys uh, or this is useless to you guys, uh, uh, but I'll ask you that in a moment. But uh, this is really simple. So let me walk you through the cadence of this, right? The cadence of this. So, hi, Mary, I'm holding a peer-to-peer -peer discussion with CEOs and founders in the insurance industry. The purpose of this meeting is to share and collaborate on ideas, strategies that help in three critical areas. One, to keep existing clients engaging and investing in your product and services. Number two, to let the market know that they can take advantage of your offers and that you are still open for business. And three, to look at maximizing the opportunity of generating clients and customers uh, that are going to be getting back to work in the next two to three months. Mary, as an owner, this is an opportunity to connect with like-minded business owners in your market and looking to take optimistic, proactive and offensive, offensive 
rather than defensive, uh, uh, rather than a defensive approach, to stay and thrive in business in these uncertain times. This may be the best convert. This may be the best conversation um, uh, you'll have in the months to come. Uh, let me know if you're interested in being part of the discussion, and I'll send you all the details to confirm your attendance. Cheers, my friend, right? So P.S., just a quick introduction to myself. I'm the founder of Insurance Growth. We help the insurance industry to attract, engage, and convert new clients by providing innovative systems to increase your branding messaging offers that give you measurable results. An example, we've been delivering 30 qualified client inquiries uh, to ABC Insurance that have had 30% growth uh, in month-on-month -month sales. That's the P.S. So letting people know what we do. Now, I know there are some questions here, right? Uh, how well does this work? Uh, if I'm new to the niche and don't have uh, an impressive bio. So Howard, um, uh, um, I'm gonna help you out here, Hi Howard, because for some people you're gonna be scared to do this, right? Uh, because you're asking those types of questions, like I've got no authority, I've got no, right now people are looking for people who are confident and assured that they can help people. So I'm gonna ask you, Howard Tiano, can you help people with what you do? That's my first question, just type in yes or no. If you can help people, you can help people. That's awesome, right? So, regardless of the niche, do you think we can do a little bit of homework on a niche to figure out what's going on? Can we go to the association, look at what's happening in the media right now, look at some of the challenges, the frustrations, all those sorts of things, so we can recognise what's going on and we can we can uh, uh, um, essentially um, uh, feel what what is happening, so we can see the mood, the theme of what's going on. So it gives us information, right? So now we need to marry up what you do and how you impact on those three things. How do you keep the customers paying money if that's what you do? How do you attract customers who are interested in what they have to offer uh, and letting people know that they're open? Um, how do they take advantage of the gap in the marketplace that is happening right now uh, where people will choose them first as opposed to a competitor? If you can help in any one of those three areas, Howard, then you can help these people. That, that This email can be adapted to suit that, that thing. Uh, I'm, where you can find people, there's this amazing website that nobody can find. It's called LinkedIn, right? And on LinkedIn, you, you need to create your profile to suit what you deliver, what you do in the marketplace. And you need to generate connections with people who are in a specific industry. And one of the easiest ways to connections is, hey, look, um, I just want to connect with you. You're a CEO and a founder. Uh, I love uh, the fact that you've done some amazing charity work. So a little bit of compliment, right, in the connection. Um, look, what I'm doing is I'm essentially bringing ideas uh, and, and systems and processes that are supporting the industry in these three areas. I just love to connect with people just like yourself. Um, uh, it'd be great if we can connect. There's your connection invitation. If you have Sales Navigator, it allows you to connect with more than you can send out hundreds of invitations, but it allows you to connect. Uh, uh, you get 150 opens before it, before it uh, stops per month, uh, and you get 33 direct connections. Right, so it's not hard to get connections in LinkedIn for niche markets if you're going to use LinkedIn as a, as, a, as an area, Howard. So those are things that you can do, right? So so if you have a scrape list, you can invite the scrape list to this uh, to this conversation. If you have a, a trade show list, you can invite people from trade shows to this conversation. Uh, if you go and look at the the video from two or three days ago, I showed you where you can get so many leads that it's not funny, right? So many leads, Tanya just just uh, had a bit of an aha moment. Uh, but I never thought of this. This is <laughs> what an opportunity the Zoom economy is right now. Absolutely, absolutely, Tanya, right? Um, uh, where's the video? Uh, James, YouTube channel, Consulting Unleashed, or join the, join the Consulting Unleashed Facebook group, um, and you can get the, you, get the video in there, right? So there's plenty of videos that I've done in the last uh, seven days to talk about um, uh, how to approach the market. How, do we, how to approach a Facebook group? Uh, uh, be more clear. What Facebook group do you want to approach, Mark? Your Facebook group or somebody else's Facebook group? <laughs> right? Um, um, uh, so uh, I'm not sure what that means. That's like a vague question there. So I'll help you out if you, if you become more clear in your questions. Um, so Howard, does that help you? Is that, does, has I, have I answered your questions? Now? Just yes or no? Awesome, right? So you can do this. Anybody that's starting out can do this, right? Because if you can help people, then people are looking for people who can help, right? Uh, Facebook business groups. Uh, you need to talk to the moderator um, uh, to, get to, 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 uh, to get yourself in. You've got to be very careful here, by the way, uh, Mark. Uh, if you're going to open this up to an opportunity for, for invitations, you can't um, do this. You don't want 30, 40 people on this call, 
right? Because then, then it's going to be too hard to, to control and it's going to be too hard to get the information across from people who are joining this. Remember, this is peer to peer. You want to keep it small. So I would say between five and 12 people, five and 12 people is what I would say, right? Um, uh, at the most, because that means you get, everybody gets a chance to have a chat. Everybody gets the chance to talk about what they're interested in or what they believe should happen or they, or they can share an idea or they can share with each other. They can chime with each other and you can unmute and you can mute and you can have the conversation. So you don't want to go, you want to be really careful that if you put this in a Facebook group, you don't, you, if to, this is going to completely fail if you have 20 people show up on a call. This will, then it turns into a webinar. You can't do collaboration. So it's almost impossible. So if 20 people show up, now, you got to, now you're in a webinar. Now, the very thing that you said you want to set up, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be thrown by that. Uh, they're going to say, hey, I thought this was going to be a peer-to-peer -peer discussion. You cannot have a peer-to-peer -peer discussion with 20 people. Then you're going to have to do things like breakout rooms and all that sort of stuff. That gets technical. That gets complicated. Five to 10 people. Five to 10 people, right? Uh, uh, are you talking about my email? Um, this is just the email. In my email, it does have my contact information if I send an email out. Yeah, this is just what I'm giving you as a script, um, Mark. Um, uh, you don't have to target one industry, Mark, but it works if you target one industry. It does work if you target one industry because then it becomes relevant. If you're talking about business owners in general in groups, um, yeah, other business owners want to know what other business owners are doing. So yes, you still got the opportunity to do that. But if you can do a niche, much better because niche, like right now at the breakthrough, we do physical therapists. So physical therapists right now are talking to other physical therapists. They're talking with each other. Hey, are you still open? How are you coping? What's working? What's not working? Are you increasing money on advertising? You know, all this sort of stuff comes up in those conversations, right? But the, the actual session in and of itself is, uh, it is important. But the most important thing is what happens after the session. This is where you're going to get 100% conversion rate on appointments, but I'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, so everyone uh, in this niche group gets uh, to speak and pitch. No, this is not a piss pitch uh, pitch. This is not a piss or a pitch. Chris, this is not a pitching session. No pitch. If you pitch, you're a dead donkey. You're out, right? No pitching. Value, share, help. That's all this is. If you pitch, you're out. You, you, would, you you've completely fucked up this idea if you pitch in this idea, right? This is not a pitch session. This is a, I want to help you. Remember, they're all competitors with each other. If you're doing a vertical niche, Chris, every person is in competition with every, every other person. So who are they going to pitch to? They can't pitch to anybody, right? They're going to pitch to me, right? No pitch. If you go down the pitch path, you have ruined this strategy. It's not going to work for you. You will fail, right? You don't pitch right? This is not a pitch. Remember, this is to have a collaboration of peer-to-peer -peer conversation. Talk about ideas, problems, challenges, uh, be able to solve some of those problems in those uh, conversations, right? It's, it's, so I'm going to share with you, if you be patient with me, I'm going to share with you exactly how you get 100% conversion rate of appointments, right, out of this strategy, right? So you're going to invite people to this and you need to be professional about this, right? But what I mean by this, you need to follow them up because you need, the, the idea is you want to confirm the attendance, right? You're going to say, hey, this is only for a small group. We are letting other attendees know who is showing up. So we're going to introduce you before you get there so that they know that you're coming, right? So you need to show up. You cannot uh, agree to come to this and not show up. This is for a peer-to-peer. -peer. This has been specifically set as this time. This is an opportunity for you to have a proactive uh, uh, a conversation about opportunities, about things that you can solve in real time for your business amongst your peers. We've got some really experienced people in the industry, and I'm sure that you've got some great experience that you can share. Because the idea at the end of the day, we want to make sure that you're still in business. We want to make sure that you are thriving in this industry. We want to make sure that you take advantage of the opportunities. So are you interested in joining us? Will you join us? Yes or no, right? Here's the time. That's another script. Uh, that was at the 32 minute mark of this recording. Timestamp 32 minutes. And when I put this video up, you can get that, use that script, right? So uh, so this is your invitation that we're going to send out peer-to-peer -peer, CEO decision maker only. This is not to the marketing manager or the, you know, the person who doesn't make a decision, right? Uh, focus on expanding your network, i.e. sending personalized connection requests on LinkedIn with other A players. Uh, you'll raise your credibility just, uh, just by association. Absolutely. If you can invite A players to this conversation, that would be awesome, right? So next thing. There's this chart and it's called the Know Your Market chart. 
So we have frustrations, wants, fears, and aspirations. So right now, what people are frustrated with right now was very different to what people were frustrated in business three months ago. The frustrations that businesses are facing right now are very different to the frustrations that they've had uh, uh, three months ago. So your talking points need to address where people are at now. So here's where people are at right now. Cutting costs, letting people go, trying to figure out how they can stay in business, trying to deal with customers that are leaving with and trying to keep customers uh, there, trying to collect money on invoices to keep cash flow going in, trying to figure out how they can attract new customers, trying to figure out how they can pivot their business in the way that they deliver their business to the marketplace. These are only five of the frustrations that I've shared with you. There's probably another 30 frustrations that people have. But if you think about your market and you think about the frustrations they're having, this becomes really important, uh, relevant research and relevant content for you to be sharing in the this conversation amongst these peers, right? So for example, if we look at the frustration of right now, um, where you know customers are leaving or customers are deciding to cancel, right? So that's a frustration. So what if we had a way to minimize or stop customers from leaving, have them keep paying, and more importantly, maybe have some of those customers buy more from what you do. So we go from the frustration to the what, right? Uh, for the frustration right now is we have to do different, different. you know, we don't know how to do business remotely for our clients. So you don't know how to do business remotely. What if we had a way to make it easy for your customers to engage you in a way uh, virtually or in a way that's safe with COVID-19 practices um, so that you can still serve your customers and still generate cash flow from the marketplace. So frustration, don't know how to serve my customers, to, hey, how to serve your customers, right? Um, right now, where uh, uh, the phones aren't ringing, right? Phones aren't ringing, which means nobody's buying. If nobody's buying, we're not making sales. And so that's a problem, right? That's a frustration. So imagine in this time that we can still let people know that we are open for business, let them know how we can help them in this time of business, and more importantly, provide them with incentives and offers that are relevant to where they're at. And ultimately, this enables you to have the phone ringing off the hook with customers who are interested. So we go from frustration to the want. Now, the away from fears right now, the biggest fears the business are facing right now, am I going to be in business in three months' time? That's a big fear, right? Uh, second fear, um, how am I going to keep my staff? I can't lose everybody because I'm going to need them when I get back, right? How are we going to keep them? Uh, number two, how am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to uh, uh, pay my fees and subscriptions and all those sorts of things? How am I going to do that, right? Because if this keeps going for me, I'm out of business and I'll be looking for a job like the four and a half million people who lost their jobs uh, uh, in Australia and the 11 and a half million that lost their jobs in the United States in the last two weeks, right? So, so that's the fears, right? So what's the alternative? The alternative is the aspiration. We need to keep the doors open. We need to let people know that you can transact and that you can inquire. We need to transact in a way that makes it easy for customers to buy online. If they can't transact online right now, we need to create the ability to be able to transact online uh, uh, for your business. Um, in terms of attracting clients or engaging, we need to look at your communication. We need to look at your, your cadence, uh, what you're communicating, your offers, those sorts of things. If we take a offensive approach to making sure that we're letting people know that we're still in business, to making sure that we're actively engaging with offers that are relevant to where our clients are at, if we're making sure that we are uh, doing what we can to uh, put our message and our brand uh, in the marketplace so people can inquire, then naturally what's going to happen to our business, it's going to grow, right? So I'll give you an example. A lot of consulting champions right now are generating clients. Uh, all the conversations I'm having with my champions privately, every single one of those, they have generated clients in the last two weeks uh, uh, in, in the, throughout this COVID-19 virus situation. Every single one of them has generated clients. Uh, that I've been speaking to. Why? Because they've been proactively engaging, applying some of the stuff that I've been sharing and talking to you guys about here. They're actively focused on being in business. They're actively offering their services. They're actively engaging and listening and, uh, in conversation with the marketplace. They're actively trying different things to go to the market with. This strategy here is a no-brainer free uh, lead generation strategy, right? This is a no-brainer free lead generation strategy that you're using in this market, right? So understand that every single person here can actually do this because the, the fact that you've popped on this Zoom call means you know how to use Zoom, right? If you don't know how to use Zoom, uh, Zoom is free, but I would recommend you get the paid version so that you can have up to an hour or longer in that conversation. The other thing is it gives you the ability to record the conversation so that you can give this conversation back to people. So now, knowing this piece of, piece of information, knowing that we have this information, we understand the market, we can formulate our conversation. We can sit and say, hey, here's how we solve some of these problems, right? But also, 
you get to survey. You want to do a quick survey. Which of these four things do you need right now? Adjust the way you serve your customers. Uh, ideas to keep customer inquiries coming in. Uh, making sure that customers and prospects know that you're still open for business. Uh, creating relevant offers that help clients buy your products and services. Of these four things, which are the most important things? Now, most people say all of the above. Some people say this thing right here is the most important thing, right? So what you want to do is, uh, I'll get to that, Mark, because yes, if you're going to offer a mastermind, um, um, uh, you can do the mastermind in this conversation, in this peer-to-peer -peer conversation, but I wouldn't use mastermind. I wouldn't use the word mastermind. I wouldn't use that word because if you're going to do mastermind, I'd rather get paid for a mastermind, not do a free mastermind. I don't like doing free masterminds. I, the, all the masterminds I'm involved in, I pay for. There's one mastermind I'm in, I, I, they, I pay $48,000 a year to be in one mastermind. There's another mastermind in, I'm paying uh, $28,000 a year to be in that mastermind. Uh, there's another mastermind I'm in, I'm paying $35,000 to be in that mastermind. Those masterminds are crushing it for me, right? So paid masterminds, if you're going to do a mastermind, do a paid mastermind, don't do a free mastermind because nobody's going to value a free mastermind, right? This is not a mastermind. This is a peer-to-peer -peer conversation about being offensive, taking the offensive move in the market to be able to stay and grow and thrive in the current market situation. That's what this conversation is about. That's what this meeting is about, right? So we want to survey those clients and find out what they want, right, in the conversation. And when you get this survey, you're going to send an email out to all the participants and say, hey, here's what we're going to be talking about. This is what other people have said that they're interested in. Uh, so they think about some of the ideas and think about perhaps some of the approaches that you're taking right now to solve some of these challenges or solve some of these problems. Because we're going to be asking you questions in this group as a peer-to-peer -peer discussion. So this way, this gets them actively engaged and it also shares with you where they're at at and what they need in the market. This is a great filtering uh, method that you can use to figure out what they want and what they need, right? And also, it's a great filtering method to, uh, to, uh, to uh, drive the topic of your conversation, right? So, um, you run the meeting, uh, you could run the meeting a couple of different ways. You can say, hey, just want to introduce yourself, uh, want to go around, just introduce yourself. Uh, you know, um, uh, what's, the big, what's a big win? What's a positive win for you? Uh, and if you had a question or what, what, what do you want to get out of this peer-to-peer -peer session? That's a way that you can facilitate. Who are you? What's a win for you? What do you want to get out of this session? Right? So people can write notes, you're writing notes, and you're also recording this, right? So you want to let them know also, say, hey, we're recording this, and we'll put timestamps so that, we're, because when we give you the recording, you can go directly to the area that I've just been talking about, or you, we've, you know, in answering your questions, so that you can take the action points of doing that. So we're going to make sure that you get this recording from this uh, peer to peer session, right? Now, at the end of that, we just want to get some uh, takeaways, and we get, want to get a little bit of feedback for what you thought about the idea. So that's what you're doing right up front. So you're setting up and saying, this is how it's going to work. This is what we're going to do. This is, what, this is what's going to happen. And then we're going to sit there and say, um, great, let's talk to Mary. Mary, introduce yourself. Great. Question? Great. Now, we're going to come back and answer those questions. So we're going to say hi to everybody first, right? Unmute, say hi, right? Then we're going to come back and we're going to answer those questions, right? And so, Mary, you said this is what, you, this is what your question was. Let's answer, so tell us, give us some context and then let us help you as a group uh, answer those questions, right? Great, have you got what you needed, Mary? Awesome, Steve, how are we going? Right, question for you, right? Great, let the, let the group chime in, right? Answer that question, right, away you go. So we're solving some problems, but the very first part is you saying, hey, here's what I'm seeing, here's what uh, people need to do. Um, right now, people are uh, failing at uh, automating their uh, communication. They're failing at being consistent or having relevant offers in the marketplace. If these are the areas they're failing, and if we can fix some of those things, these are things that I know that you need to pay attention to. So, things that I would, if I were you, that I'd be paying attention to is I would be actively engaging your existing clients in regular conversational communication. I would actually ask them to keep paying and stay. So the idea is you want to uh, have them stay and pay. Uh, it also is an opportunity perhaps to solve some of the problems that they might have with some of the other services or products you have in the marketplace. So you can use this as an opportunity to engage and survey your clients. Second thing is, is anybody past, present, uh, previous, anybody on, on your list, you want to let people know what you're doing and perhaps craft an offer to invite them to take advantage. Because number one thing right now, you guys need cash. Doesn't matter what business you're in, you need cash, right? So how are we going to get that cash? The best way to get the cash is to craft an offer that is relevant to market. Not just any offer, right? It has to be relevant. If it's relevant and it's time sensitive and it's sensitive to where people's, uh, uh, people are at in terms of what you do and how what you do will help them, then you're going to get much more conversions. But the idea is to craft a campaign, not a promotion, right? So you're running a campaign, not a promotion. 
Uh, third thing is you need to be visible. Right now, there's a gap in the market. A lot of people dropping out online, dropping out of business. Uh, people are going to look for options, right? People are going to say, who's open? So if you're not open, they're going to call the next person. If that person's not open, they're going to call the next person and they till, until they get to you right? Because right now people are needing your products or services. So one of the things I would highly recommend is that you go, you have, um, uh, understand why people will buy their products now, why people are buying, why what people are doing in their products. So do a little bit of homework online and see if there are some success stories of uh, businesses that are actively opening and pivoting uh, in the market. You want to bring that into the conversation. So that's all I got to share. Now, great, let's, let's work with you. So you've controlled this. Now, at the end of this presentation, here's the cool thing, right? Um, you can get testimonials, right? So what you want to do is, Peter, uh, I'd love to know what you thought about the experience what you got out of this, and do you think uh, other, sh other people should be part of this conversation? This is a great conversation. It's great meeting you guys. It was really fantastic. Got some great ideas. Thank you for sharing all this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. If we could do this regularly, it'd be awesome. I'd love to, uh, you know, people who people really need to have these types of conversations. You get, you get eight people, eight testimonials talking about you, you know, saying, hey, thanks, Mary, Tom, Sue, Tanya, Chris, for putting this on. This was great. I've got so many good ideas. Uh, this was really helpful. Uh, it was helpful to see where other people are at, to learn from other people. You've, now you've got five to eight testimonial videos, right, that you've recorded on this thing. Huge, 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 right, for you, right? Now, you've also got content that you can use in your marketing, for future marketing. So here's how you get 100% appointment rate, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this video, I'm going to jump and uh, um, uh, do some light editing, and maybe if you want to get fancy, you you know you want you you might want to edit their piece and send them their piece, right? So what I'm going to do is so that you get the most out of this meeting, what I want to do is I'm going to give you a copy of the recording, but I'm also going to follow up with a phone call. So is it okay if I reach out to you, make a time just to have a conversation, uh, to do a couple of things: one, to answer your questions about perhaps what you picked up from the session. Two, to find out what you're actually implementing and engaging so that this becomes something that's valuable to you. Um, uh, and so I want to be able to connect with you with that. Is that okay with each of you that we can do that? Every single person is going to say, yes, you can call me. Every person is going to say, yes, yes, you can call me. This is great because they're on a high, right? So now effectively, you've just got uh, between five and 12 appointments, right? Right now, effectively, in this one little foul swoop, you've got five and 12 appointments. And in that conversation, you can ask, how are you going? What are you doing? What are you doing to, about this? Where do you think you need help right now? If we were able to sit down, look at, some, look at a plan, look at a structure, and at the end of the day, maybe we can partner up with each other and help you solve some of these problems. It is one of the easiest sales pitches that you can make in this process. So um, uh, I'm happy to take questions. First of all, who thinks this is a cool idea and who thinks this is a crappy idea? This is the easiest, freest, cheapest, most powerful thing that you can do, right? I said yesterday that this is something that every single person can do. Everybody can apply this and generate opportunities. Yeah. So my question is, who's going to do it? Who's going to do this? Who's going to set this up so that on Monday or Tuesday, you're going to do, you need a, about a four-day window. Who's going to do this, right? Who's going to do this? Ed's going to do it. Lamar's going to do it. I'm already working on it. <laughs> uh, Johnny's going to do it. Jade is going to do it. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I'll do it starting on Monday. Yes. Yeah. This will work well with Facebook. Absolutely. Facebook appointment funnel. <laughs> Facebook appointment funnel. Peter Smith, I'm going to keep you hanging there. I will share that soon. Uh, uh, approximately how many invites uh, uh, to get? As many as you can, Howard, you've got to get to, you, know, you want to get to 10 people. And you, and, and you want to actively engage in that conversation. So remember, it's not just send an invite and yes, they're going to come. You've got to give them context. You've got to engage them. You've got to keep, you've got to have a little bit of communication cadence to make sure that they show up. So doing the survey, sharing the survey with each of them, introducing to who's going to show up to the actual meeting, all of that is going to keep them to come to the meeting. Right? So you want to make sure they show up. Uh, will this be available to look at again? James, if you are in my Consulting Unleashed Facebook group, yes, you will see this. If you are on my Consulting Unleashed YouTube channel, yes, you will see this. Uh, absolutely, you will see this. Um, Peter, can we do an ad to recruit uh, the 10 people? If you want to, Peter, if you want to do an ad, 
but I would do it. I would run an ad. I would actually go. An ad's going to be. Uh, I think an ad's going to be impersonal um, because what we're trying to do is create uh, create a, a personal connection with these people. So, uh, can you do an ad? Then it turns into a webinar, Peter. This will this will turn into a webinar. Um, uh, you've got to give too much context in an advertisement unless you're going to do a video ad, right? But I would, I, you know, to me, that's you don't need to. I said this is free and easy. This is, you don't need to spend money on it. Um, uh, this is a similar concept to the executive roundtable. Yeah, it is, but you're doing it on Zoom and you're do, you're giving people a taste of this. Uh, how would you recommend cold calling for this? Um, how would uh, uh, if you've got a list of people, you could just reach out and say, "Listen, I'm just reaching out. Uh, we're putting uh, we've got a peer, we've got people from this company, we've got CEOs joining us on this uh, roundtable. Uh, we're talking about uh, looking at offensive, offensive ways rather than defensive ways of taking advantage of the market. Are you interested in joining the uh, in, interested in coming along and attending the group? Uh, it is going to be a meeting online, very easy, so you can do it from wherever you are. Uh, we're going to record the meeting. We're going to provide tactical things and strategic things, and you're going to have other business." and is sharing the things that they're doing proactive right, right now to stay in business, to thrive in the opportunity. Are you interested in attending an event? There's the script. Now, if you are, I'm going to send you the invitation. If you, go, if you are going to accept the invitation, we're going to ask you to do a couple of things. We've got a survey for you to fill out. We're going to let people know that you're coming, so they're going to expect you to be there. You're going to see who's going to be in attendance, right? Um, and the whole purpose of this is whatever the purpose is, I said. to so one, look at ways of maximizing your opportunity to uh, generate cash flow and revenue right now, looking at ways of staying in business, looking at ways of taking opportunity advantage of the uh, coming mini boom that's about to happen, right? But we're looking at being proactive and we're looking at uh, ways uh, to take an offensive, offensive approach, not an offensive approach, an offensive approach rather than defensive approach to business. So if you'd like to be with people who are actively, proactively being in business and, and wanting to grow and wanting to sell, then I would like to welcome you in if you're one of those businesses, right? There's your, there's your phone script, um, Howard. I don't know if that works for you, but it kind of works for me. Um, um, so working on virtual summit at the moment, but your approach is definitely more intimate. Uh, yeah, very intimate, very quick. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the whole virtual summit hung. There's lots of time, lots of marketing, lots of, you know, that's great. Let me tell you, virtual summits work really well right now. Um, uh, there's lots of virtual summits going on, but this is a more intimate, more, this is where you get to connect, where you get, you know, in that process, which is really cool. Um, which industry uh, are we can approach with this? Any industry you want, Mark, pick one. Any industry you want. Yesterday, if you look at yesterday's videos, I showed you 30 different niche markets. You can pick any one of those, Mark. Uh, just type in an industry, Mark, and, and I'll tell you if you can approach it or not. Just type in an industry. Um, Trent, uh, thinking about how uh, the peer-to-peer -peer conversation might flow best. Are there any examples of these calls online for us uh, to, to, uh, to uh, get a model? Um, I gave you the, if you re-listen to the recording, I kind of gave you the model and the structure of, of this uh, uh, presentation. Uh, I have not posted any of my peer-to-peer -peer conversations uh, online. Uh, at all, none. Um, you know, to me, I'm also mindful that the people that are sharing that group, that it's personal. Uh, you might want to Google. Maybe there's some people that have shared, you know, live masterminds of people that are willing to share. You might want to Google it. But the structure of the meeting, I've actually laid out the structure in this in this training. So so all of that's there. Uh, Chris, you introduced yourself as an insurance broker. For the, I didn't introduce myself as an insurance broker. I introduced myself as uh, what did I introduce myself uh, as? Uh, going up. Whoops, I introduce myself is. Uh, and uh, I'm a founder of Insurance Growth. Insurance Growth can be anything. I just use that as an example. You know, I, it could be John Logar and Associates. I'm the founder of John Logar and Associates. I'm the founder of Wickety Whack Marketing. Who cares what the founder I am? It's, I use this as an example. I didn't introduce myself as an insurance broker. I, I just used the name, uh, just called it a company. So I don't know if, I'm sorry if that confused you, uh, Chris. Um, uh, if I would invite existing contacts on uh, LinkedIn, uh, would your first message be shorter than uh, the complete, your complete invitation? Well, as long as you tell people what the meeting is for and why it's important for, the show, for them to show up, Titus, absolutely. By the way, uh, I just want to uh, have some common sense here. I'm just giving you an example, right? I'm just giving an example. You don't have to take my example. You, if you've got a one word sentence line that you want to put and it's going to put 50 people or 20 people uh, in, a, in a call with you, good luck to you. I'm just showing you an example. So you don't have to follow. You can do whatever you like. You can change the rules, copy this. You can say, hey, John, this is a bucket of shit. It's a horrible email. You can do all of that. doesn't matter. 
what gets the message across? Make sure they need to be aware of what they're going to have and what they get from this uh, from this marketplace. Yeah. So what you know, as long as you're getting that this is what's happening, this is why it's important. Is this is this something you want to be part of? If it is a yes, then I'm going to send you the invitation. I'm going to send you the information. And if you are agreeing to be here, you must show up. You must participate because we are letting other people know that you're coming. So so that's how you hook them into showing up. So hopefully that's helpful, uh, Titus. Um, um, uh, Trent, awesome. Landscaping. Okay, great. Yes, you can do this with landscapers, Mark. That's uh, my answer is yes. You can do this with landscape, uh, landscape design people and landscaping company. Uh, absolutely. Do exactly what I told you to do. Just change the word to landscaping. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Roger that. Okay. Uh, emulate, uh, then <laughs> emulate, then innovate. The principles are what are vital, not the words. Yes. Uh, thanks, Titus. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, Lamar says this is brilliant. Happy to answer any questions um, right now. What I'd love to um, so. So, Chris, I'm going to just read this out and just and reiterate this idea because I'm, I'm not sure why you asked this question. So, um, uh, was Rusty on phrasing? Just wondered if they wonder what your purpose is in putting this together as a digital marketer and decide uh, uh, to, if not mindful of that probability. Who cares? This is not about who you are and what you do. This is about the fact that you're taking leadership and this is about them. This is not about you. All I want to let people know what I do, right? In, the, in, in, in my invitation, if they don't know who I am, they're going to go, okay, you invited me. Well, who the hell you are? That's the next question. Well, who are you? Why, why are you doing this, right? So this is who I am, right? My PS isn't, the only importance that the PS has on this, Chris, is that I have to let them know who I am. I'm letting them know why I'm doing this in the email. I'm letting them know what the purpose of this is. This purpose is for you, not for you, your purpose. Remember, some, I think somebody said uh, um, that this is, a, you know, is everybody pitching. This is not for you to pitch anything. All you're doing is saying, hey, wouldn't it be great if we've got some people in this market who are active, proactive, looking at their opportunities, uh, having an optimistic conversation of the possibilities of future uh, of business in their industry right now. If you were in this business, would you want to be part of that conversation? Right? Would you want to be part of that conversation? Now, if you're not interested in that conversation, well, you're fucked. You're out of business. Because if you're not having those types of conversations, I, I, I really worry where your head's at right now. I worry where you're in, right? But if, you, if this is the type of thing that you'd like to be involved in, that you'd like to have access to with your peer-to-peers -peer in the marketplace, then, hello, this is a great opportunity, right? This is a very valuable opportunity. So remember, the purpose of this is not for you to sell your shit to people, because if you do that, you're going to burn all these people and nobody's going to come. You know, people will sit there and say, you know, if this guy puts that invitation, don't do it because he's just going to pitch you shit, right? You know, even if you have to iterate that, you know, I don't know if, to, like in this statement, in this email, am I saying that I'm pitching anything? I'm not saying I'm pitching anything. The information is about them. The purpose of this information is for them. It's all about them. That's what this strategy is about, right? So, you know, if, so if you're thinking that you're going to pitch, don't pitch. I'm telling you right now, this is not the place to pitch. But what I've just shown you is if you had five people show up, I've just shown you how to get five appointments guaranteed. If you have 20 people show up to this conversation or 12 people, I've just shown you in the space of three or four days how to get 12 appointments with people for free. No advertising, no promotion, right? No paid promotion. There is promotion, but no paid promotion, right? This is the easiest thing on the planet to do. All of you can do this because you're on Zoom. You know how to use Zoom. So you can have a meeting. It can be an informal meeting. It doesn't have to be formal. You don't have to show up in a suit. You don't have to do what Martin did, right? What happens in those appointments? Chris, let's deal with these questions first. Because if you don't know what happens in the appointment, I don't know what you're selling, dude. You know, uh, um, what happens at those appointments, I told you, you're going to ask questions, you're going to help them out. Uh, then you say, hey, you know, right now, you know, what if, we, if these are the challenges, this is the issue, what if we put a plan in place? And at the end of that, if you like the plan, I can show you how we can work together. If not, or you can take the plan, do it yourself, or if you'd like to, you can, we can help you right? You're going to add value to this conversation, Chris. 
right? You're a sales guy. You are selling your services. You already know how to sell your services. That's what's going to happen in those appointments. You're going to ask more questions. You're going to get more feedback. You're going to take it to the next step. Because some of the things that are going to occur, Chris, to you, is they're going to sit there and ask you, so Chris, how, what do you do? How do you help people? That is the most dangerous question that they can ask you, Chris. That is the most dangerous question. Because as soon as somebody asks that question, somebody has to pull out a credit card. As soon as a client asks me, so John, how do you help us? Great, get ready, you're pulling out a credit card. Mark says, this, is, this, this goes well with my strengths, so easy peasy. I've got to make sure I'm selecting. You, you know, the, your, the right attendees, Mark, are people who own businesses. That's the attendees. Decision makers, managing director, founder, owner, CEO, uh, chief operating officer, right? Decision makers only. The, 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 the selection is easy. If you're using LinkedIn, it's really easy. You just put in the designator and sales navigator what you're, what you're looking for in the search bar and it'll automatically find all those people. You're dealing, remember, this is peer-to-peer -peer decision makers. Peer-to-peer -peer decision makers. CEO, managing director, owner level. That's it. Not people who are not owning a business, not marketing managers, not, they're not invited. That's not who you're inviting to this. You're inviting people who are running their businesses. These are the people that you can help. That's what you want to do. Um, yes. Um, any other questions? Any other questions? So Chris, did that help you? How to, uh, what happens in the appointments? You, you do what you normally do in your appointments is ask some questions, see what, where the opportunity is, then open the opportunity to say, Hey, well, if you were to set an objective area and that will be the objective, why is that important to you? Uh, what's stopping you from achieving those outcomes right now? All these things right now. So if we can sit there and I can work on a plan together and you can look at that plan, you can say, great, you can take the idea, run it with yourself, or you might ask me, I can help you. Is that okay with you? There's your pitch. Here's your sales pitch on the planet, Mark. Oh, sorry, Chris. Any other questions? By the way, Yeah, from a strategic partnership perspective, absolutely, Blamar. This, this has a huge potential. What you want to all do is you want to set a date. Right now, can, uh, right now, if you can type in what day are you going to do this on next week? What day are you going to do this on? Just type in the, in the chat. What day next week are you going to do this on? You're going to set a date to do this. What day? Just type in what day are you going to do this next week? Johnny says he's going to do it on Thursday. Awesome. Who else? Fourth on Friday, on Thursday, on Thursday. Awesome. Going to do a few people on Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. Awesome. Lots of meetings on Thursday. Lots of people are going to be getting bucket loads of appointments on Thursday. This is awesome. Monday. Going to do this on Monday. Awesome. Friday the 10th. Yes. Great. So we've got a whole bunch of people. Because guess what, guys? I'm going to keep you all accountable to this, right? I've actually got a record of you saying I do this on Thursday. So when uh, at the end of next week, I'm going to ask as a bit of a roundup, who did their meeting? How did it go? Right? So you've, you know, so all of you, I'm going to call you out, right? To do this. The idea is I want to keep you accountable so that you create the opportunities, right? Every one of my champions that has done this last week, I've all generated sales from this opportunity. Every single champion that has done this has generated sales, right? Out of doing this. As I said, you're showing up here to help. I'm trying to help as many people as possible here to generate revenue, which is really important, right? So um, with that, we've got the, the survey. Um, Wildcraft strategy uh, realize that they probably suspect that when invited, I don't know what you mean. Uh, awesome, okay. so. Um, I want to acknowledge any wins. Anybody have any wins in the last 24 hours? Uh, uh, Kristen Bienvenue, uh, you know, had a, had a uh, closed the deal yesterday. That was awesome. Congratulations. Tanya closed the website de deal. Congratulations to Tanya. Anybody else close any deals in the last 24 hours? Anybody make any appointments in the last 24 hours? Anybody close any deals? Anybody apply anything that they've learned from me this week? Uh, got some results. That were really cool to see. I'm going to give you a moment. Um, uh, there's a whole bunch of you on here. Um, Blamar got an appointment set. That's awesome. Um, who else? Um, Ed, Ed joined me uh, as, a, as a client. Thanks, Ed. I really appreciate that. Uh, yes, uh, we're going to make that a huge win for you, Ed. Um, Peters, two appointments. Congratulations. That's awesome. 
Um, anybody generate appointments? Anybody got any meetings? Anybody do a, set up a presentation? Anybody close a deal? Uh, just so we can uh, uh, make sure that people are focused on moving forward with the uh, with the uh, the strategies we've got here. Uh, two appointments without the Facebook appointment funnel. <laughs> Peter Smith, uh, I will bring the appointment funnel to you. Don't worry, you're going to see it. Uh, Johnny's got two meetings. That's awesome. Good to see. Uh, working on two contracts and two audits this weekend. Lamar, that's awesome. That means money's coming into the bank account. Uh, good to see. Good focus. Uh, what else? Um, uh, what else we got? this anybody else any other wins for the group I'm happy to answer your questions here we're coming up to the hour but I'm happy to hang out if you're happy to hang out with me uh, for a little bit so I can help you directly with questions so if you want me to answer a question for you strategize craft a campaign do all those sorts of things I can uh, do those things for you here um, uh, um, we've got a whole bunch of people here I'm happy to hang out uh, in the presentation I share what we do for our clients during the meeting. No, you do not share what you do for your clients, Peter. What you share in the meeting are things that people or businesses need to be aware of right now in relation to the things that you deliver. Not what you do for your clients, just things that you know that people to pay attention uh, should be paying attention to. So right now you want to say, hey, uh, not realizing it, uh, one of the things that we're seeing in the market is we're seeing Facebook ad, uh, ad costs drop dramatically. And we're also seeing a bunch of people drop out of their ad spend, which means this is opening up a huge gap for competitors in the market right now to advertise cheaper and actually open themselves up to a lot more opportunities. I just want to make sure you're aware of that. Uh, you know, so you know, how does what you do support bringing in more customers? How does what you do support uh, uh, you know, the other thing that Facebook does for you that people aren't aware of is that you're letting your clients know if you're running what we call a perfect audience strategy, your, your clients are seeing you when they're searching online. When they're on the news feeds and the news channels, you're actually visible to them so they know that you're still open. So imagine having Coca-Cola's budget right now uh, for pennies on the dime, right? for pennies on the dollar. Uh, because what happens is you can do retargeting, you can, you know, you can become very visible. Eric Severance, great again. Uh, thanks. I really appreciate you being here, Eric. Um, uh, Titus, thank you. I really pre appreciate it. By the way, this recording is going to be uh, put into uh, the, uh, the uh, if you go to, whoops. Sorry. It should be, um, uh, if you go to consultingunleashed.com forward slash go, uh, you'll be able to get access to uh, the recordings, subscribe to the YouTube channels, get into the Consulting Unleashed Facebook group if you're not already there. Uh, what are your thoughts on creating a simple one-page landing page with the uh, targeted industry I'm targeting? Yeah, you can do a landing page, say, hey, here's the, here's the private invitations. You can say, hey, you, if you are on this page, you've actually been invited here privately, uh, and this is what it's about. So you can do a one-page landing page with all the benefits and those sorts of things. Um, uh, Tanya, four appointments this week, one proposal out yesterday, another two will go on Monday. Tanya, you are a rock star. You are a rock star, Tanya. Uh, 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 unbelievable. That's amazing to see. Um, good to see, Tanya. Um, so, it's great to see that you're busy in these uncertain, crazy times too, by the way, Tanya. I really, really do appreciate you hopping on these calls. So, I want to thank you for being here and thank you for sharing. Um, Peter, okay, but let's say I'm, I'm not a Facebook expert. Should I? No. So if it's not Facebook, what are you an expert on, Peter? Tell me what you're an expert on. So then we can talk about that, and I'll help you phrase the conversation to your clients. So what are you an expert on, Peter? How do you, what do you do to help businesses? And I'll give you the role. So reactivating clients. So you can talk about say. So that's perfect, right? So just to give you perspective, some of the things that we're seeing in the market, a lot of people aren't communicating or haven't communicated effectively with their existing clients. And in, in many ways, um, they're also missing out on opportunities uh, to be communicating with their connections in the marketplace. One of the things that we've seen is to, uh, to reignite or reactivate. Uh, this right now is the greatest time because people have attention span uh, to reignite uh, uh, all past contacts, all uh, people who haven't bought, all people that you've proposed to or never closed. 
uh, this is an opportunity where you can drive cash into the business. We've seen how people can actually uh, uh, generate opportunities. Uh, you know, a perfect example of this is Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza sends you an offer email twice a day. If you're on Domino's Pizza's uh, uh, um, uh, uh, communication strategy right now and you're on the app, you're getting a notification twice a day. You're getting emails twice a day. Uh, by the way, Domino's Pizza uh, spent four and a half million dollars, uh, sorry, seven and a half million dollars on email marketing last year. Seven and a half million dollars on email marketing just in Australia. Uh, I, I, I haven't got the figures of what they spent in the US, right? Seven and a half million bucks on email marketing. And they made a billion dollars in pizza sales. They can attribute over a billion dollars worth of pizza sales to their pizza app. How cool was that? So that's how I would uh, 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 bring that into the conversation, Peter, is sharing how what you know can make a difference as part of what you're sharing in the, in the, uh, in the uh, conversation. Uh, let's say I'm, uh, so, okay, hopefully I've answered your question, Peter. No, your survey needs to be around where they have their problems right now, right? Are you having, you know, right now, where do you need the most help? Do you need the most help to keep your clients on board and paying you? Do you need help to actually uh, engage uh, uh, clients right now effectively to let them know that you're still in business and generating more client opportunities? Do you need to uh, make sure that people are aware? Are, what strategy, you know, uh, do you need strategies right now or, or do you need to make sure that people are aware that you're open, that you can still business? Uh, are you, you know, those questions I had on the form are simple questions, but you can relate your idea, Peter, to communication, yeah? Um, uh, that's the thing that you wanna be talking about. So uh, I'm just looking at Trent, 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 strategy question. My content and social agency helps financial services get leads and clients online. Our new sales model is to offer a free digital audit, which uh, Obertel does, and the content calendar using the premium SRush tool. Awesome. Quick question, the sales presentation. Can you discuss what sort of structure or steps you think will work well for the strategy call? I'm gonna walk you through sales presentation in that. That's a whole structure and conversation. So Trent, uh, I like the idea that you're offering the, the audits and you're offering the service. You need to make sure in your offer, uh, uh, you need to position, position the value of that offer. So money value of that offer, right? And why you're doing this for people. You cannot do, you cannot offer this to people on the, on the disguise that you're trying to make sales. You have to position this offer that you're genuinely trying to help. So your communication say, look, we know these two things will at least give you a better understanding of where you're at right now. And some of the things you can proactively do uh, to make sure that you're in a better position. So you've got more visibility and you've got more the ability to make sure that clients are aware that they can still engage you in business. And so we've put these tools together to show you how to do that. I'm more than we want to give you these tools. If you're interested, that'd be great. If you're not, we understand, right? So, you're, so you've got to position why in relation to where they're at you're doing this. It's not a matter of like, we want to give you these free tools and you know, we think this is a great idea. No, we want to give you this because we think this can help for these reasons. That's the offer you need to make. When you get to your presentation, your presentation doesn't change, right? I don't know how you sell your clients right now, Trent, but the way you sell your clients isn't going to change. It just has to be shifted in relevant to where your clients are at. You know, you've got to solve your client's problem, right? Uh, you know, why, you know, uh, why do they need to be visible? Why do they need to generate their SEO? Why do they need to, these are all things right now, SEO, uh, paid ads, all that stuff, super, super important to the marketplace, right? Let me tell you, the people that I'm working with, Trent, right now, are freaking going insane with trying with people uh, 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 offering this or wanting, wanting to do this. We have one of our agencies um, uh, uh, in Clare, uh, they picked up $18,000 worth of deposits last week from customers that came to them saying, hey, we need to get our shit together, we need to advertise. So right now the market is, is ready to listen, but you need to position your offer in a way that they hear the message of where they're at. So you've got to be really careful here. If you, if you come off being predatory, they're duck, they're not going to engage. If you come off being uh, uh, supportive, helpful, acknowledge right, what's going on, then you're going to get a much better conversion rate, right? Like a few of our champions, Richard, uh, Tracy, um, uh, I know Will, they get 85% open rates on their cold emails. 85% open rates because of the relevancy of the information that they put in the email. Because they've taken, they've really thought through the message part and they've really thought through the relevancy of the information. That's why they get 85% open rates and that's why they get two or three phone calls a day from their cold emails, right? People coming in. 
So hopefully that helps you. So Trent, sales process, I'm gonna talk about sales process uh, in the coming trainings uh, over the coming, uh, coming days. So keep an eye out for uh, the bit where I'm gonna show you the easiest sales pitch you can ever make uh, and the easiest way to convert clients into sales. So I'm gonna be doing that as a whole section. So you should be doing what you're normally doing, Trent, to make sales. You shouldn't change that. The only thing I would change is the messaging of how you help people uh, to make sure that you're fitting in with their objectives and their outcomes. Uh, Trent, uh, perhaps could you focus on one of these Zooms? Yes, I'll be doing that. Uh, so, serve and close. Yes, I'll be doing that. In fact, what I could do is I could break it up. Here's how you do the beginning part. Here's how you do the middle part. Here's how you do the close part. Because closing is a whole training on itself. Um, Peter, 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 Lamar. What are my thoughts on the offer of sign now and, and pay 30 days? Um, so part of me goes, try it. Uh, a free, giving away free um, is, is, uh, is a proposition where uh, it's a no risk for the client but, and all the risk is on your shoulders. But I like people to have skin in the game. I don't like to give uh, really valuable stuff like that, you know, for free. If I'm going to do ad campaign, you're going to pay. You're going to pay for the ads. Uh, I'm not going to pay for the ads for you. If I'm going to do, if I'm going to do like, you know, you, I need your skin in the game too, right? I would rather say, hey, give us some money, and I'm more, if you're not happy, I'll give you a refund. That's a better risk reversal. That means I got some cash down, right? You can do that. But even then, I'm not a fan of that. Even then, I'm not a fan of that because me, to me, that just cheapens what you do, you know. Like big companies, like companies that I work with, uh, that I talk to, that are spending, you know, where their budgets, ad budgets are 10, 20 grand a month. If you put that off in front of them, they're going to go, what's the catch? They're going to go, well, what can I expect from nothing? I can expect shit for nothing. Yeah. You know, so, so I know people do that, but I don't know about you, Blomar. I want cash. I don't know about if you need cash right now. If you want to collect cash in 30 days, it's like, you, you've got a 50-50. In fact, I think you've got a 20-80 chance of actually collecting any cash. So you've got an 80% lost chance of you spending a month trying to help somebody else for free. You should be spending a month trying to get paid to help somebody. That's what you want to do. You want to get paid. I don't know about anybody here. Do you, does anybody want to do shit for free? Because I don't want to do shit for free, right? I want to get paid. So if you value what you do, you should get paid. And right now, if you're looking at these two people here, Tanya and... Uh, Kristen here, they didn't do it for free. They got paid, right? They didn't offer their services for free. They're getting paid. So what do I think of a 30-day trial? You can try it. I wouldn't recommend it. I don't like it. I know lots of businesses have built the back of their business off that trial uh, scenario. Um, but uh, a lot of those businesses don't last. And a lot of those clients don't last either because it's got no skin in the game. Um, how about sign and when we don't, when we, and when we don't start work until the first deposit? in case they are just waiting for things uh, out like uh... yeah no no you, that means there's no money down you need money now like st we'll start work when you pay well that means you're not getting any money right uh, there's no real commitment there's no financial commitment so no let's start work not let's start not working and the people you want to talk to are the, are the two top thirds not the bottom third because there are people in that middle third that, are, that, that, that just don't know what to do and they need help, right? The people at the top third are desperately looking for your help. They'll pay you money, Bomar. They got cash, yeah? Don't give away. So that one thing I want to be mindful of, Bomar, you've got a lot of experience, dude. You've been playing at this game for quite some time. You've got a lot of experience. Don't give away. Value your experience. And because if any, all these things that you're offering, uh, offering Bomar, these are all cheap-ass shit things to offer. Right. This is showing. This is showing that you're you're willing to do anything on your part just to get a deal. So it's to me it reeks of desperation when you do stuff like that. You don't need to do that, dude. You know what you're talking about. You're super smart. You've been you've learned a lot of stuff. You've learned a lot of stuff from me. You've applied a lot of stuff. You've been able to generate clients uh, for your business. So value what you do, man. You know, right? Value what you do. You know this, right? You were a superstar athlete, dude. You've got the mindset. You've got everything working for you, right? Own what you do. Get paid for what you do. Harry says, I like getting paid for shit. Yes. Good one. Uh, giving anything for free means no value to the client. So, uh, so, they, so they play you. Yeah, that can happen. Um, yeah. You know, 
I'm, I'm telling you right now, you have to understand the first person you have to own is your experience in you. If you, if you're like some of the questions I'm being asked here are questions of fear and lack of confidence. If you've got lack of confidence, let's get some confidence here, right? Let's build some confidence in what, what we do. Um, let's do that. Would you like to do the confidence exercise with me? Just type one. If you want to do the confidence exercise with me, just type one, right? You want to do the confidence exercise, just type one. I'm not going to do it if, not, if, if, if uh, most people don't want to do this. I don't want to waste your time, right? If you want to build some confidence some clarity and some certainty, and you want to do that with me right now, and you want to bring that into, uh, into your focus, then let's do this, yeah? Let's have at it, right? So um, what I want you to do, right, is um, I want you to write down what inspired you to get into this business? What inspired you to, to be in this business? I just want you to write down a sentence for yourself. Get a piece of paper. Uh, what inspired you to be in this business, right? What, what inspired you, right? So James says to help, awesome, yep. What inspired you? Like you can even type it in if you like. I'd write this down, type it in. What inspired you to be in this business first? You want to help people out, right? Um, you know that you've got some skills, right? So if you think about skills, think about your experience. Think about some of you people have worked for other people, you've worked in other businesses. All those experiences of work gives you an inside knowledge of, of how businesses work, right? Uh, to free people from bondage of a job, yes. Uh, for yourself as well, more freedom for them, uh, the ability to impact on people, yes. To create freedom for yourself, yes, right? Uh, to help small businesses act like big, big, bigger businesses, yes. Autonomy, blah, blah, blah yes, right? Now, when you think about these words, when you think about talking about this, I want you to think about what it looks like for that to be real. I want you to put that in your mind's eye to think about what is it, what would be real to have autonomy? What does it feel like to have the ability to have an impact on people? What does that feel like? How do you feel? How do you feel right now? What is your posture? If you were to act like you, these feelings right now, what is your posture? Are you sitting up straight? Is your chest out? Are you breathing with strength? Are you calm? right? What are you feeling right now? If you feel that this is what you're doing and what you're here to offer and why you're in this business and you think about that as a reality for you, how would you be feeling in your posture? How would you feel in the way that you're feeling right now? I'm sitting up straight. I'm breathing with purpose. Yes, Bama. right? You know, does anybody feel a sense of calm when you're thinking about this? Anybody feeling calm, right? Anybody feeling calm when you're feeling this experience right now? Yeah, Trent says, yeah, I'm feeling calm. I've got a sense of certainty. Absolutely, right? Content, yeah, right? When you're on point, when you're thinking about why you're doing this, what the purpose of it is, it is why you're doing this. Right, you feel great. The reason I'm so fucking passionate about what I do is because I believe in the opportunity that every single person has here because I can see what's going on out there and I can see what's happening with the people that I work with. I can see that there is so much out there and we want to grab a piece of that for ourselves uh, in the marketplace. Yeah, focus, capable, all these words. Yes, right. You can bring that feeling anytime you like. The, the matter between the, my two fingers here, what's in between my two fingers? Your brain, right? Yeah, neediness uh, is a deal killer. Yeah, you don't need it because you're there to help, right? Okay, so um, I'm going to do an exercise. I'm going to show you how powerful this weapon is between your brain, right? So um, I need you, if you can, um, I'm just going to uh, escape out of this. I'm going to stop my share. Um, I need you, if you can, uh, uh, okay, let me just, all right, so what I need you to do, there's uh, 30 people here, so I'm going to try this, do this as a group, okay, so uh, what I want you to do, so if you follow my instructions clearly, and you are safe, in my instructions, right? I'm gonna ask you for in just about a few seconds, I'm gonna ask you to do this exercise with me, right? Um, listen to my voice, follow along with the instructions, right? Because I'm gonna show you how powerful 
this thing, the, the gray matter in your head, how powerful this really is. You are going to see how incredibly powerful your mind is in terms of what you do. So this is a really simple exercise. Uh, this is an exercise I teach kids to do, um, but, it, but, it's, a, but it's, a, it's something that will resonate with all of you here, right? Because if you can conceive it in between here, at least in between your ears, if you have a conception, then there is a possibility of the reality. What I'm gonna be sharing with you is the reality, right? The reality, not the, not the possibility, not the perception of, but I'm gonna share the reality, right? The, the physiological reality. So I want you to all close your eyes, right? I want you to close your eyes for a moment, just be with me. I can't do, uh, can I do this while I'm driving? No, uh, oh, actually, uh, yes, uh, um, uh, whoever's driving, don't close your eyes. Keep your eyes open, but follow the, the instructions. Keep your eyes open, follow the instructions, right? So for those of you who are closing your eyes, close your eyes. For those of you driving, please do not close your eyes. That's, that's, a, that's definitely a, a no-no. Keep driving, just listen to my voice, and in your mind's eye whilst you're driving, think about what I'm saying to you, okay? So this is a really simple exercise, uh, but it's gonna demonstrate to you how powerful you are from a mental perspective, right? So I want you to think about those of you who've got closing eyes, those of you who've got your eyes open, think about um, uh, your, right now, you're sitting in your chair, and I want you in your mind's eye, or in, in your vision, in your mind's eye, to go to your refrigerator right now. So in your mind's eye, you go to your refrigerator, and so all of us are standing in front of the refrigerator, and we can see that it's a white door, or a stainless steel door, or a colored door, and our fridge is sitting there, and we open the refrigerator door, and we actually see uh, we feel the cool air. So imagine you just open the refrigerator door and feel the little cool rush of air on your face as you open the door because you've got that brush of coolness coming to you right now. So you feel that coolness as you open the door. And so whilst you're there, you see this lemon. You see a bright yellow lemon sitting right there on the shelf in the refrigerator. And what I want you to do is I want you to reach in the refrigerator and pick up the lemon in your hand. And you'll notice as soon as you picked it up that the lemon was really cool in your fingers. You'll notice, so I wanna make sure you're feeling that coolness of the lemon in your fingers right now. So you just picked up the refrigerator and you've got that coolness in your fingers. And what I want you to do is I want you to take the lemon, put it onto a carving uh, board, take a knife from, uh, take a kitchen knife, right? And so before you, uh, before you use the knife, I want you to then make sure you pick that lemon up again. You can feel that coolness. I want you to bring the lemon to your nose and I want you to take a deep breath, breathe the lemon in. And you can probably notice, you can just feel the waxy peel in your fingers, but you notice the smell. There's, there's that little citrusy smell from the skin of the lemon, but you notice, notice that there. I want you to breathe that in just so you notice that. You've got the cool lemon in and you put the lemon back on the carving board and you take the knife and you split the lemon in two, you carve it in two. Now, as you're carving, you notice that the juices are dropping out of the lemon. And what I want you to do is now I want you to pick up half the lemon, um, notice it's cool and notice that you've got now some juice dripping on your fingers there and you bring the lemon right up to your nose and I want you to breathe in and you'll notice now when you're breathing in that there's a much more stronger pungent citrusy flavor. You can actually smell the citrusy uh, uh, aroma of the lemon because you now see the juices and that's all exposed. And so you've got it right up on your nose. And what I want you to do right now in your mind, so I want you to bite into that lemon as hard as you can. And I want you to wash all the juices around in your mouth. I want, to, I want you to bite in the lemon, wash all the juices. You can feel the coolness and the soundness and all that sort of stuff in your mouth, right? So um, uh, I want you to come back to this room right now. So we've, got, we've just got lemon dripping all over our mouths. We've just got, uh, we've probably got juices running around in our, in our mouths. Right, so I want to ask you some questions here. I want to ask you some questions uh, and just type in the keyboard. Um, who felt, uh, if you felt the, um, when you open the refrigerator door, who felt the coolness of the air of the refrigerator? Just type one if you felt the coolness of the air of the refrigerator when you open the refrigerator door. A uh, 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 few, Lamar felt the coolness of the air, right? Felt, so open the fridge, felt the coolness, great. Okay, so. When you picked up the lemon, right? You picked up the lemon. Did you feel the chili lemon? Uh, just type two if you felt the chill of the lemon when you picked up the lemon. Two, 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 lots of people felt twos. Yeah, okay, felt the chili lemon, awesome. Okay, so who smelt the lemon flavor when they brought the lemon up to their mouth? Who smelt the lemon? Just type three if you smelt the lemon. If you just, you could smell that, just that slight citrusy. We've got a few people who smelt the lemon, awesome. So. Um, when you brought the lemon back up, when you chopped it in half and you brought the lemon back up and you saw the juices um, or you, and you smelt the, and you, and you breathed in that fragrance, who felt a much stronger fragrance? Type four, if you felt when you, when you had the half, you had a much stronger connection to that, that flavor. Uh, is this? A lot of people go four, 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 four. Okay. Now, you all bit into the lemon. How many people here winced 
And how many people have noticed, and maybe some people still have, you've got saliva juices running around in your mouth right now. Just type five if you winced and you had saliva running, you had saliva juices running around your mouth. We've got five, five, five. Yeah, cool. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Now, we conjured that up in our mind's eye. We didn't eat a real lemon. We did not pick up a real lemon. We did not open a real refrigerator door. We pictured everything, but what we pictured was we felt the coolness. We felt the lemon. We tasted, we had the smell, the olfactory and the taste. We knew what was coming, right? And yet our mind and our body reacted to every single moment of that thing that I just shared with you in the room. That is how powerful your mind is. Your mind, anything it can conceive or perceive, it can manifest the clarity of that situation in your mind, right? So if you can do that with a lemon, imagine what you can do when you show up for yourself, right? One of the things that I do, if you want to build real confidence and you want to make sure you have great sales conversations, one of the things I do before I have a sales conversation is I think of that person that I'm going to meet before I go into about, about, about a couple of minutes before I go into that sales conversation. This is what I do before every sales presentation, right? This is a little ritual that I do. It's really simple. It doesn't matter where I am. I could be in somebody's office face to face. I could be sitting here at, my, at a desk. Uh, uh, I, you know, I could be out on my mobile phone uh, talking, right? Wherever I am, I do this, do this every time. So this will, this will, um, <laughs> Brooke Blanc says, wow, that was intense. Yeah, that's how powerful our mind is, the power of visualization. But you didn't just visualize, you mentally experienced. It wasn't just a visualization. You were mentally experiencing the, the process. You were conjuring up the physicality of that process. So it's not a mental thing. It's a, it's a whole physical smell, touch, sight, feel, right? You know, the kinesthetic, yeah? Olfactory. All, all that happening at the same time, right? And the visualization. Mental. So it's not just mental visual. It's not visualization. It's the actual mental physicality of the process. So when you think about, I go back to what I do before I get into a sales conversation. So this is what I do. Every, every sale, I've been doing this for years. In fact, I'm just trying to think of the person who taught it to me because when I heard this the first time, I thought, how cool is this? Now, it's a little bit woo-woo. And, and let me tell you, a little bit of woo-woo goes a long way right? It helps to be woo-woo every now and again, because we are humans. We, there's woo-woo-ness woo -ness in us all, right? <laughs> um, but what I do in my mind's eye, I picture the person I'm going to speak to, and I put them in my mind's eye, and I, tr I, want to, I picture them in the way that, it, uh, that I'm going to have a conversation with a family friend, a, a, a family or a friend that's close to me, somebody that I care and that I love, uh, that, that I want to help. So I put them in that framework. I put them in there. I go, hey, you're someone I like. You're someone as if I'm going to go into this if I was trying to help a family member or a friend who I really uh, 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 like and I really want to help. So I want to go in with that intention in my mind's eye with that person. So I put that person, even if I don't know what they look like, I have a vision of what they're like. And it's funny when I, when I think about who they, what they look like, it's amazing how many times they look exactly like the person I thought they looked like uh, when, when I get to speak to them, right? It's really weird. So, so, um, um, so I put them in my mind's eye and I'm, and I, then what I do is I embrace them. I, I embrace them like as if they were family friend. We're meeting for the first time. I'm just going to give you a hug. So I'm having you, giving you a virtual hug, right? Uh, a telepathic hug, right? And I'll say, Hey, great to meet you. I really like you. I want to really help you. You're somebody that I that I, that that uh, is important. Uh, and I want to make sure that I'm here for you in this moment. And so then, what I do, then I go into the meeting with that. So then, when I meet them, my demeanour is, "Hey, great to see you." My view, my vision of them is very bright. Like I'm really excited to be here. Right. So I transfer that energy to the person that I'm uh, that I'm speaking to, and they pick it up. Like they they start to mirror. Uh, what you do and say, oh yeah, no, uh, good to see you. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, no, no, I, I really, uh, this is really important. I'm glad to be here. So it just changes the dynamic of how I approach that person. So in the mind's eye, I just want to go, Hey, I care. I really want to help you. Uh, you I want to, I want to have you as if you're a friend or a, fa or a family member, somebody I really care about and the people I care about, I really want to help. And I just want to help you. I want to just give you that feeling or that embrace in my mind's eye. Right. That's what I do before I go in. And oftentimes, we end up with a customer. Oftentimes, with that mindset or that feeling, 
because of that intent and because you're going in that way, then your tone and your demeanor is going to be focused towards helping, right? And at the end of the day, if we can find out a way to work with each other, then let's do that, right? Uh, so I'll give an example of a really uh, powerful close uh, that one of my champions used the other day because she panicked, she lost a few clients and she was going to a presentation. She wasn't sure if the client was going to spend any money. He was going to waste her time and say, hey, coronavirus, we're out of business. We can't spend money with you. So she was really worried. And I said, hey, why don't we just do this? Why don't we just go in with the intent of just helping out? Why don't we just go in with the intent? You know what? I really care about these guys. I really care about their organization. Uh, they really do need some help and I know that I can help them and I just want to help them out. What if we went into that conversation just with that? Win, lose or, or fail, whatever happens, we just want to go that we want to be show up as our best, be our best and at the end of the day that they on the other side know that you actually cared about what they did. And she said, let's go with that. Let's ask the questions. Let's listen to what they actually want to do and where they want to be and how what we do can help them achieve those outcomes. And at the end of that, this is what you're going to say, right? You say, hey, I know that you probably, last thing you're probably thinking of doing is spending money right now. But you understand that this thing, you need to fix this thing and you know it's important and you need to do this. So what I'd like to do is I would like to partner with you because I'm want to. i here to help. I know that this, I know that if we do this, there's going to be the positive outcome that you're looking for because right now that's missing. That's a missing piece. So by the sheer fact, nature of applying what I'm going to share with you or what I've shared with you, you're going to be in a better position. You're going to be in the position that you want to be. Is that fair? They go, yeah, that's exactly what we want to do. So I want to help you. What I want to do is I want to partner with you, right? And so in partnering with you, I want to make this easy. Can you afford this budget, right? So she said, can you afford a $5,000 month retainer? Uh, in two or three months time, once we get this case moving, then we can discuss uh, uh, how we can move that to our normal retainer. Is that okay with you? And then, you know what? That, uh, right now, you know, we can't afford to do that, but we need to do this, so we're going to do it. Uh, we really want to work with you. Uh, you're the only person that's made any sense to us in the, in the mess that's happening around coronavirus. I'm feeling emotional about that conversation right now because she got the deal. She got the deal, right? So understand that if you come with that intent of trying to help people out, right, then they will want you to help out. If I look at uh, Simon Pry right now, he's on a 100% conversion rate. They've closed... $30,000 for the recurring revenue in the last two weeks, $30,000 recurring revenue, and they closed three $100,000 plus deals, three $100,000 plus deals. Law firm, accounting firm, a tech product, uh, sorry, law firm, financial planning firm, and a tech product company, uh, they closed for six figures, right? And they are out there, and, if, and, I, and I know Simon really well, he's one of our consulting champions. And the reason why they're doing really well is because of this factor of that they actually give it, they, they care. They care so much that they just want to help. And so how do we work together to help? And the people that are sitting in front of them saying, yeah, we want to do that, right? They're not asking them, you know, uh, you know they're not sitting there, how do we trust you? And can, can you do this? And can you show me proof? And, None of that is happening in the conversation. It's like, yeah, this is the conversation we want to have. Okay, great. Let's work it out how we can do this together, right? Yeah. That's what you want to do, right? So I want to, before I hop off on this call, because we've been here for an hour and a half, this is a long call. I'm going to try and keep these to a little bit less. I'm going to be here same time, same bat channel tomorrow. Uh, if you go to, in the chat here, I'm going to put in consulting unleashed dot com forward slash go if you go to consulting unleashed well, why did that split that there if you go to this link you get access to the consulting unleashed facebook group if you don't already uh, you can go to my YouTube channel, subscribe, turn the bell on the notification. As soon as we upload the video on YouTube, you'll get a notification to watch this video, right, uh, in the market. Uh, I am doing these webinars every day, every day. I'm showing up for you every single day, right? Uh, and so what I'd like you to do, if you've been getting benefit and you've been getting value out of this, what I'd love for you to do is can you share the webinar link with other people that you know who should be jumping on board? Uh, the link is on that, on that page, consultingunleashed.com forward slash go, right? So if you, if you share that link uh, uh, to others who you feel would benefit, I would much appreciate that uh, to let them know where they can get help. 
right? Uh, so so, so uh, like I said, I want to try and help as many people as possible. I hope these ideas and tactics and strategies I've been sharing with you every day have been useful, that you've been applying these. I know we've got a few people are getting sales, which is great to see. Uh, I really appreciate that, uh, that as well. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to ask for those who've got clients, if you've got clients right now, uh, retention is really key. So if you want to talk about how to retain, uh, also looking at ways of upselling existing and also uh, the past clients, if you want to talk to me about that, uh, you can on the page, you can book some time in my calendar. I'm just trying to help people, uh, real, those people who've got clients right now need to keep those clients paying. I'm trying to help those people to make sure your retention's right because that's a really critical area you need to focus on. And the second aspect of that is if you're trying to attract or engage other clients, I, I want to talk to you. So if you want to hop on my calendar, if you're already having clients, uh, you can just click on that calendar link. You can grab some time. I'm asking a few questions. You are no under no obligation to buy or do anything with me. Um, uh, my, like I said, my intent here is to help as many people as possible uh, and to give you as much as I can. Uh, the calendar link is on the Consulting Unleashed dot com forward slash go page if you go to consult right at the bottom you'll see you'll see my direct calendar so you can grab some time in my calendar so uh with that um i want to thank you for being here this is going to be uh, placed up into the thing i hope you love the idea that i shared uh with the whole generating the meeting and and getting uh uh, uh, uh people together because this is one of the easiest ways that i know that you can generate appointments for free um it's a very powerful strategy um uh uh, Blamar said, I'm going to implement this. Awesome. James, where's the calendar link? It's on consultingunleashed.com forward slash go. Uh, G -O. So with that, I want to thank you for being here. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, before I go, biggest takeaway from today, if you can put in the takeaways, uh, want to know what you got out of this session, uh, really appreciate that. Just so I know that you're learning and just so other people can see, I'll call it out. Biggest takeaway from this session today, really uh, let me know. What's your biggest takeaway? Just type it in the chat, biggest takeaway. Look at your notes, just type in the chat, biggest takeaway. A uh, little bit of woo-woo goes a long way. Yeah, <laughs> yes, Chris. <laughs> Believe in yourself and the information, absolutely. All of you should be feeling kind of good right now. You know, that, that whole exercise, that whole process of getting connected, you should be feeling kind of up. You know, this is how quickly you can change your confidence. You know, confidence is the game. Uh, love the virtual roundtable strategy. Yes, Howard, absolutely. Uh, visualize the outcome, Chris. Yes, need to do that. Uh, other takeaways from today's session? Other takeaways? Any other takeaways? Just type in the chat. Positioning, messaging, and strategy. Lots of patience uh, for Facebook <laughs> <and> appointment funnel. <laughs> uh, Peter Smith, it will come. It will come. It will come. Uh, I'm going to do something really special with that too, by the way. So it will come. Your patience is going to pay off big time. Um, Relationship-based approach versus transaction-based approach is what wins the big ticket deals. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, uh, I'm going to quote you on that. Blah, blah. That's a very good quote. Uh, um, a very good quote. So, uh, so yes, um, Trent, uh, messaging the power of the small group discussion, absolutely to generate connections, uh, trust, add value. This is a great way uh, to generate high quality leads. Yes, absolutely. Uh, having a helping attitude, help uh, and the money will come. Yes. The money will come for those who value uh, themselves and the money will come for those who help because people will look for ways to spend money with you. Right now, I've got champions where people are looking to spend money with them. They're getting people out of the woodwork, which is awesome. And that's the thing that I want to be happening for you people as well. So with that, I want to thank you. Uh, like I said, if you've got value out of this, please share. John, more than anything, just starting my day with you this week has been amazing. Uh, for my mindset, some of my clients are mentally falling apart. Uh, it's been uh, my webinars that have allowed. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I really appreciate um, uh, you, sh you sharing, uh, sharing that, uh, Tanya. Um, thank you so much um, uh, for doing that. That's very, very kind of you. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to help as many people as possible here uh, in, uh, in today's wonderful, challenging world. Um, uh, so I do appreciate you sharing that uh, with me. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Miguel. I think that's Miguel there or Midge. Um, really appreciate it. So, uh, stay safe. Uh, 
be great to your family. I know this in this in this terrible time, in this confusing time, uh, and this time we're having to isolate. Uh, one thing I would encourage you all to do is just reach out to somebody, a past friend, a colleague, associate, maybe a client. Just say, hey, just reaching out to say, how are you going? Hope everything's well. If you want to have a quick chat, let's have a, have a quick chat. Been talking about lots of ideas. Uh, I'd love to just have a conversation. Uh, so it'd be great to have it'd be great to have a positive conversation. And I want to bring a positive conversation to you. So it'd be really great just to connect. Reach out to one person today. We have the opportunity to to change the lives, at least touch other people, uh, to let them know that one we care, and more importantly, uh, that we are here uh, for those people as well. So say hi. Uh, to the people in your world. Take care, everybody. I will see you same time, same back channel tomorrow. My Sunday, your Saturday, somebody else's uh, Sunday or midnight, but I will be here tomorrow, same time, same back channel. Uh, the link will be the same. Remember, go to consultingleash.com forward slash go. Take advantage of those things. Get into the, the YouTube channel. Get into the Facebook group. Go to, um, uh, please do share this uh, meeting as it is happening every single day. So uh, with that, I want to thank you and I look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow and more. Take care, everybody.